Tech Girls is probably the best thing ever. <laughs> it really like shows me that there's so many opportunities and it really like provides me with like how technology will influence the rest of the world in the future. This, uh, this week we focused a lot on prosthetics and re rehabilitation in engineering, uh, which are really important fields um, to be able to work with patients. Um, the promise of biomedical engineering and research is to be able to help uh, these patients live um, healthy, normal lives. Um, and so it's just a really exciting area. Today we're going to learn about an organization that provides area girls with mentors, programs, and research from around the globe to help inspire them to imagine and achieve goals in our tech-savvy world. Join us as we visit with Kim Wilkins, founder of Tech Girls. Come on. So I've been in technology for my 30 years of career and always was a bit of a minority in uh, women in tech, but I kind of thought things were getting better. And I went to a conference in 2010. I was teaching technology then, and I went to learn about teaching technology, but what I found instead is that the number of women studying computer science had dropped from 37% when I went to school to 18% and less um, then. And that just really like, gave me a gut punch. I just couldn't believe that things had mm. actually gone backwards yeah. in time because so many other fields have progressed. Um, so that kind of stuck with me. I um, went and got my back, went to school and got my master's in education, and all my research was based on, you know, girls in technology and what was holding them back. And um, I, anybody that would listen to me, I would talk to about this problem. And finally, I wrote a blog post um, about, hey, maybe we should start some sort of organization here to get girls interested. Um, the International Day of the Girl on October 11th in 2012. It was the very first one. I thought, let's kick it off then, so I tweeted it out, um, had people locally but also from around the country, you know, supporting and saying, yes, let's go, let's make it happen, yeah, that's and that's, that's how it was born. I've always been interested in STEM, um, science and technology, and I think that uh, girls are underrepresented, and I think that both science and girls are cool, so. The combination is really fun. <laughs> I got into biomedical engineering because I have always wanted to be an inventor as a child. I didn't know what career that actually fit into. Um, and I found through my education um, in biomedical engineering that it actually covers almost every field. Um, you can do electrical, um, mechanical, computational. You can make things and then give them to people and see how they interact with it and see if it's what they need. So that's exactly the experience we're trying to give them here because that's the pace of things and that's how we can get medical development to a whole new level. I'm interested in uh, being involved in public health when I get older. So I was interested in the way that biomedical engineering and public health kind of influence each other. But I think that this is really important because girls have a different view on um, these subjects than guys. And so if you have these two um, different minds um, working together to come up with an original idea, I think that's a way better way to go about it having two different perspectives uh, really makes a different product than just one. We designed a different type of prosthetic hand that would have three fingers instead of two, which is what the simple claw hook hand has right now. And so we thought it would give it more stability to when you're grabbing things or when you're picking things up. And we just made it out of tin foil and straws and um, pipe cleaners and folded it all together and like used rubber bands and strings to help make it move. So the goals of the design um, it are basically there would be an improvement over the split hook claw. So it would be very easy to get it to market because it would uh, be a modification that would uh, be simple to implement, but would uh, greatly increase the stability and grip. Um, and it would continue to minimize costs so that it would be accessible to people who currently have this little claw. So for a demonstration, do you want okay. to do it? So this one's moving, and then these two are just fixed. Picks it up. <laughs> They need to see it in order to be it. So one of the problems, because there's not as many women in technology, um, it's you don't often see the role models. So you know, if you close your eyes and imagine a computer scientist, what do you often imagine? It's a yeah. guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we need these role models and mentors to show girls that this is a, a viable career for you. 
Um, we also need to get over some of the stereotypes about computer science or coding and working with technology is very much uh, isolated. You're in your basement doing stuff. Right. And it's really a very collaborative process these days. And girls also want to know that it's going to make a difference in um, people's lives. And so showing that you know technology is behind everything right now. Right. And so whatever you decide to do, um, you're going to uh, be better off if you have some understanding of how it works. Yeah, and you partner with many other or organizations to, to bring these programs to the girls. Talk about how that works. Sure, well obviously, um, you know, I can't do it on my own. You can. <laughs> and so, and so uh, from very early on I've been using social media to get the word out and it's just been a great platform for me to get collaborators. So uh, one of the first was Computers for Kids and right. doing a middle school program there. Um, Girls Geek Day is an elementary school program, and that was actually the brainchild of Paula White, who's a teacher in Albemarle County. And what was that? Uh, so that is on a Saturdays, about once a month. It started just in Crozet Elementary, but now it's around the county. And uh, we started with, I think, maybe 30, 35 girls signing up, and now we have up to 70, 75 uh, oh, signing that's up. fantastic. So it, that's sort of the spark their interest. Mm -hmm. But again, it wouldn't happen if the county wasn't willing to open the schools up to let us come in and do these programs. Right. Um, so the collaborations are key. And then middle school programs, you have a lot of middle school age programs too, right? Yeah, so the one at Computers for Kids, uh -huh. and then the, there is a program at Jewett uh -huh. and at Henley right now. And those are also collaborations with um, UVA uh, has a program called Girls Excited About Math and Science. And they've been in those schools doing math and science activities. And actually a high school student from Albemarle County uh, won uh, something called the NC WIT Award. And she got a grant to go with that to buy some technology things to do an after school program. So she reached out to me and said, hey, can we do this? I'm yes, le yes let's find somebody else to help collaborate. And so we brought that together and so now, the UVA GEMS program incorporates technology as well. So it's just so exciting to see the things um, snowball. Very exciting. And then on the high school level, what's happening? So the high school level, I found that to be the most challenging because these girls are super busy with all their activities mm -hmm. and then you know getting ready for college. So um, we're actually at the UVA Biomedical Engineering uh, Department and I uh, found, uh, David Chen and I somehow found each other. He had heard about tech girls and wanted to do some outreach. And so we tried a pilot program which had eight girls uh, from different high schools around the county. They got behind the scene lab tours, they met engineers and students and professors. Um, and then we also incorporated a design challenge where they actually had to solve some real world problem in like a very short amount of time. Oh, that's great. Uh, and it was so successful that now we expanded it. So another partner we brought on board is St. Anne's Belfield School. So we did our first day there with all the technology. We've added more days here and then we're going to the iLab at UVA um, later on today to have the girls present their um, designs. You can put it in the sink or um, if you want we can find a bucket, but um, if this is made for water, we might as well put it in water. Um, or if you want to not ruin the design that's your kind of um, aesthetic design to show people what it looks like, you can make another prototype because you can make as many prototypes as you want. And that way you can have one of that and it doesn't have to be to scale, you could do little ones, big ones to test out what shape is best for swimming. We are building a prosthetic for a leg that you can use in the water um, for swimming. And then we also made one that you can attach a foot to which has more traction. So if you're walking out of the shower or if you're walking around a pool and stuff like that, you won't slip with like a hard plastic foot. They need to go through the design process to understand and empathize with an amputee or someone born without a limb to understand what their needs truly are. And then um, they're working on iterative prototyping and design to make sure that they can build out something um, that could truly be useful for someone in this field. It's really encouraged me to think differently. I couldn't really fathom making a prosthetic hand before this and yet it kind of all just came together. So um, there's like tons of unexpected life events such as like people who go to the military and just other trauma events that will result in an amputation. So this was our solution and we used a ball and socket joint here and then um, flexible fingers right here in order to uh, try and make a limb that would allow 
these musicians or aspiring musicians to play just as well as people with two limbs. your goals is to, to sort of be a model for other communities, right? Right. Talk about that. Well, there, there are, uh, there's definitely a national push. I think if you've seen the media these days about yeah. the issue of technology and women in technology, especially related to Silicon Valley, the issue is definitely more prevalent in the news. And so there's a lot of national attention, which is great, but I feel like it, there also has to be grassroots efforts. So if you don't have something, you know, something actually happening at the local level, um, it doesn't trickle down so much. So right. I feel like we're a great model for um, how you can start a program locally and uh, grow it up and connect it with others. Yeah, that's so, that's really fantastic. And do you feel do you feel like you're making an impact with Tech Girls? Oh, definitely. So the first year in 2012 when we started, I think I had six middle school girls meet up for the first time. Uh, this last year, we probably reached over 100 middle school girls, over 150 um, elementary school girls, and then you know uh, dozens of high school girls. So we're definitely seeing that impact. And I think even with the Charlottesville Women in Tech, seeing that that organization is, you know, that just started in the last year and it's grown from you know a handful of us who started it, and now we're up to 40 uh, women meeting monthly. It's just um, really great. What are your future goals? Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, I'd really like to see gender equity and technology. So um, that's the sort of overarching uh, goal. And if I think if Charlottesville could be a model for that as well, mm -hmm. um, we feel that that is a great story that Charlottesville can tell and will bring more businesses and more people interested in working in technology. Uh, even in Charlottesville, um, we have a great need. There's not enough uh, technologists um, in the community right now. There's way more jobs in technology than there are people, so we need to bring more people in. Tech Girls and Kim, they're doing uh, incredible things, um, promoting um, science and technology education um, in young women, mm -hmm. and uh, really giving them the confidence that they can um, tackle some of the most challenging problems that um, our country faces, that patients face today. I really think um, our future lies in their hands, so being able to inspire and give them confidence and give them real, you know, real life examples is great for all of us.